Hi there. Welcome to Health Professions Week video, Being Flexible and Resilient, Coping Skills for Health Professions Students. My name is Dr. Julia Daniels, and I'm the Assistant Dean for Student Services and Enrollment Management at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry. I also serve as the counselor for the American Dental Education Association Admissions, Financial Aid, and Student Affairs sections. I'm really excited to be here with you today and presenting this information that will be helpful for all health profession students moving forward with your career choice. So why am I here talking to you about this topic and what might I have to say? Well, first and foremost, in my role as Assistant Dean, I have worked with health profession students exclusively for over 10 years. During this time, I have become a advocate for mental health, which is a carryover from my personal and professional experience prior to working with dental students. I see that the toll that um, mental health can take on students when they enter a stressful academic program. Conversely, I also see the toll that a rigorous health professions graduate program can take on one's mental health. So as both a student advocate and a mental health advocate, it is important for me to communicate what I've learned in my role as an educator, a professional, and a leader in a dental school um, to assist students on their journey in terms of preparation and skill development for their time in their health professions graduate program and most importantly in their time beyond in their chosen career. So what I'm communicating with you today is based in evidence, a lot of information is from research, some information is my anecdotal experience as an educator and from sharing information from my colleagues who work with health profession students across the country and also the lived experience of my students and those that I serve on a daily basis. Developing your professional skills, such as ethics, uh, professional communication, interpersonal development and dynamics, the ability to treat a patient, um, all of those skills are just as important as taking care of yourself as a healthcare provider, and that begins during your time as a student. To be a healthcare provider, you're going to take an oath no matter what career you choose, you'll be taking an oath to treat the public. And with that oath comes with it a great responsibility to be able to care for yourself, recognize your own limitations, and address situations as they arrive in your life so you can deliver the best care for the patients who rely on you every day. So, just in the same way as you'll develop technical skills in your career as a graduate health professions uh, student, you have to develop professional skills as a clinician, a caretaker, and human being. And for many of us, especially health profession students, you're all very high achieving, you're all very bright, and you're focused, driven, and determined. And so perhaps when you enter graduate education is the first time where you have the opportunity to really think critically about these skills and how they apply to you as an emerging clinician or care provider for the public. So college student mental health is a topic that's um, probably something that is in the news nearly every day. We see a lot of statistics, we see a lot of information regarding college students um, and mental health statistics, certain mental health trends that are observed, research, and uh, you know crises that arrive on our college campuses nationwide. And as students, you know this better than anybody. You know this topic intimately as a student yourself, perhaps um, going through something um, in your own life or going through something with a friend um, or people that you've associated with in college, maybe not a close friend, but peers. So why does college student mental health versus just regular mental health in the adult community have such a unique focus? Well, here are some of the 
presenting issues currently that add a layer onto mental health when we're talking specifically about college students. The academic pressures associated with doing well in college and the pressure associated with selecting a career um, is quite great. It's profound. We're at a, uh, we've hit a fever pitch in um, our country and where we're at right now where people feel an immense amount of pressure to make big decisions during um, the college years that can create a lot of stress and exacerbate existing mental health issues or bring on um, mental health issues that otherwise may not be there. Our college student population now, many of you have families. You're juggling intergenerational families. You're raising children yourselves. Many more college students nowadays work part-time jobs, perhaps even several part-time jobs, full-time work at the same time as pursuing a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. There are financial pressures that are insurmountable. There's been a lot of discussion regarding student financial aid and the current debt loads in our country. Um, so the financial pressures are um, more intense than ever before in our history. We have more student parents than we ever have had enrolling in college. These are all added responsibilities in addition to an academic career that create um, difficult um, circumstances for people when juggling mental health. Um, the research shows that 75% um, of the mental diagnoses listed here on bullet three, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, and eating disorders, 75% of those diagnoses specifically um, emerge and are onset by the age of 25. And this is right within that window of a traditional age college student. Um, and it may be within that window of when you may be entering a graduate health professions program. So this is uh, why often college student mental health gets a specific focus because we're asking people to take on a great amount of academic and career responsibility and develop their lives as adults at the very same time that significant mental health issues may be presenting themselves. Substance use peaks in early adulthood. Um, you uh, come of a certain age and you begin to engage with alcohol perhaps um, or other substances and um, this often is part of the college student experience and it can complicate mental health issues greatly. Um, managing relationships, friendships, and family, all of these change as we hit early adulthood. All of these change when we go to college and we have different priorities. And so managing all of that creates a burden on our mental health. And lastly, crisis, grief and loss, disruption, and we've certainly, with the pandemic, had a lot of that. These all create added strains to um, situations for students where, you know, you're just staying afloat and you're um, going along in your life and perhaps you hit a bump in the road with uh, experiencing a death in your family or relationship disruption or perhaps loss of a job, um, maybe even a global pandemic. All of these things create uh, circumstances in young adults and certainly those enrolled in college where mental health um, comes uh, to be something that's very hard to hold up and prioritize in the wake of other crises. So I mentioned on my last slide COVID um, as kind of uh, an example of one of those great disruptions or um, crises that can emerge that create an added layer of burden on mental health and how hard it is anyway. Um, I will say that there are some emerging studies that are showing just how impactful uh, COVID and the disruption there has been on you all, all of you that are listening to this presentation today. So. Um, you know, one of the most important things to do always is to look at the data. And there was a very interesting study that looked at the disruption in the undergraduate population in spring of 2020 and the associated mental health effects. And this study was published in the Journal of Emerging Adulthood. And it found that 75% of undergraduate students reported increased anxiousness, nearly 70% reported increased uh, difficulty with sleeping, and 
another 60% reported feeling hopeless. Now, this is important for a lot of reasons, but because all of these issues are extremely important to be able to cope with and manage as a human, but most importantly, when you're seeking to be a health professional. Managing anxiety, being able to stay healthy and prioritize sleep and having good sleep hygiene, and being able to problem solve in a way where you do not feel hopeless and helpless, which can lead to um, substance misuse or suicidal ideation. These are all skills to be able to recognize and intervene with yourself to be able to keep yourself as healthy as possible as you take on the challenges of being a student, but most importantly, being a healthcare professional. So it's really important to look at mental health for our students, for all of you right now, and it's important to look at the perspective from a graduate student, a health professional student, who is seeking to be able to treat and care for the public and developing skills to be able to address increased anxiousness, difficulty with sleeping, helplessness and hopelessness is absolutely critical. Now, why does this become more difficult for graduate health profession students? Because the data shows us, and this was a, um, <clears throat> this was a International Journal of Medical Education study from 2017, and there are many other studies that show similar information as to what I'm presenting here. There's a higher occurrence of anxiety, depression, and stress in graduate health professions programs. So students report higher levels of anxiety, depression, and stress, and there's a higher occurrence, which means there's more individuals in grad health professions programs impacted by anxiety, depression, and stress. So there's a deeper and more significant impact of psychological distress in graduate health profession students that we have to pay attention to. And quite frankly, as uh, students looking into different health professions careers, it's important for you all to confront this reality and to realize that this is something that is a skill just as much as the technical skills that you're going to learn. Being able to address your mental health and cope and be resilient um, is a way to manage a known uh, stressor and a known circumstance that impacts those in your chosen profession. Now, some of the uh, added issues that contribute to health profession students experiencing um, anxiety, depression, and stress and at a higher level and a uh, more intense um, impact is perfectionism. Maybe you recognize that in yourself or other colleagues that you have. Um, imposter phenomenon, that feeling that everybody else around you is, is better than you or um, that you're not as good as, as uh, everybody might believe you to be, not as strong academically. Um, imposter phenomenon is an area of study that I've researched extensively. Um, the complexity of health professions programs. Um, graduate nursing programs, dental school, pharmacy school, medical school, these are all very complex, difficult, heavy course loads. The curriculum is uh, pretty unforgiving, fast-paced, a lot of material. And so um, the interpersonal nature of the profession is an added, you know, complex factor. You have to be able to talk and communicate with people quite a bit. And in any health professions program, you are going to be taking a lot of coursework related to legal, regulatory, ethical issues, behavioral sciences, patient communication, being able to manage interpersonal dynamics. Um, some of you, uh, an example is dental school or medical residents when they move into their residency portion of education, you're actually providing patient care. You're treating patients uh, as a student. That is uh, quite an intense experience um, and adds some mental health stress to an already rigorous academic program. Um, in addition, there are a few other circumstances. So um, 
In addition to the rigorous academic and clinical education associated with graduate health professions programs, there's a lot of evaluation and feedback. There are tests, quizzes, exams, and competencies um, that you'll be <clears throat> practicing for or taking every single week, nonstop. Um, there is constant amount of faculty oversight and influence and evaluation. A lot of times it can be difficult for people to hear that amount of feedback and criticism and critique. And again, it's all intended to, to bring you out of the program as a uh, competent health professional who is able to treat the public. But at the time, it can create um, a sense of uh, overwhelming um, responsibility, and sometimes uh, there's fear associated, sometimes there's anxiety associated with that level of faculty involvement in your education, that amount of constant evaluation and feedback. Um, and then, of course, I already talked about uh, health professions programs where you treat patients um, and you become a clinician um, on your way, you're going to have lots of clinicals, you're going to have lots of experiences where you're taking on that role of the provider. That can be quite daunting and stress-inducing. And then, by the way, um, you're supposed to have a little fun, too, right? You're supposed to keep in touch with your family, eat healthy, get exercise, keep up on Netflix shows, and have some fun. So um, it's a big ask. We are asking a lot of our students in graduate health profession students, and we know it's stressful. Um, what we see students do sometimes to cope that isn't helpful is um, a lot of avoidance. This is a list here of some stressors and distress flares. These are things that I know from our experience and what the research says that graduate health profession students do when things get tough and they're not coping well. They'll avoid. Sometimes they will engage in maladaptive coping, so oversleeping or not sleeping enough, eating too much or eating too little, perhaps binge drinking or um, overdoing it in terms of uh, socializing and kind of blowing off school, um, not using resources. Every single institution is going to have resources to help you be successful. And so uh, sometimes students will kind of uh, put blinders on and not engage with those resources, even when that's the very thing they need to do. We see students get irritable and cranky um, and existing in constant crisis mode. Now, all of us have the ability to encounter a stressful situation and manage that stress. And you can feel and operate in crisis mode for a designated amount of time. But it is quite exhausting to spend an entire semester, an entire year, in constant crisis mode. And that way of adapting to stress or to coping ultimately leads to burnout and can ultimately lead to somebody perhaps not even being able to be in the program or having to take a break. Sometimes students will hyper-focus on the moment, so lose the ability to see the big picture. Students will often talk around whatever is stressing them out or whatever distress is going on in that moment. Um, it's a coping mechanism to try to solve the problem, but instead of coming right out and addressing the issue, students might talk around the issue. Um, and I often see students either um, over-engage or under-engage with friends. And what I mean by that is your peer circle, your peer network, that is uh, a protective factor for all of us for mental health. Having connections, even one solid connection um, in your life is protective. And so what will happen sometimes is students in a time of stress when they're not coping and managing well, they'll pull away from friends. And that's the very time that you need those people. Sometimes as a distractor or an avoidance of whatever's going on, students will fully immerse themselves in their friends and their friend groups. And if you're doing that because uh, you know, you're social and you want to hang out with your buddies, that's great. But if it's a way that you cope to the detriment of your academic program or your career pursuits, it can really backfire. So what do we do? Um, the first part of this presentation has been a bit doom and gloom, right? I'm setting the stage for what makes graduate health professions education so daunting and stressful. Now that we understand that, now we understand some of the data and the behavioral indicators, 
Let's talk about what you can do as a soon-to-be health professions graduate student. You can prepare, you can develop discipline, and you can remember your motivation. These are skills that will get you through your career. They'll get you through graduate school, your chosen health professions program, and they will get you through the time when you're applying to your graduate health professions program, which is quite stressful. And in fact, all of you, if you're listening to this presentation, all of you have done this before. You may not have consciously prepared or developed discipline or remembered your motivation in times when your, um, your desire to, to accomplish a goal wanes, but you have all done it before. And these are skills, the ability to prepare, develop discipline, and stay true to motivation. These are skills. So I ask you to reflect and recognize during your time as a pre-health profession student, one of the things you can do to prepare is to help yourself understand and acknowledge how you got to where you are. How did I get to a place where I'm thinking about being a doctor or being a dentist? How did I get to a place where I'm looking at uh, podiatric medicine or I'm looking into uh, becoming a, uh, a nurse practitioner? What are the things that happened? What did I accomplish? What challenges did I encounter? What are the ways I cope that are good for me? And what are the ways that I cope that are not good for me? This preparation, taking this pause as part of your look forward for your career is critical because if you know what you did to get to where you are, you can replicate that and you can do it again. In addition, if you recognize the things that you do that perhaps don't help you, some of those maladaptive coping strategies that we talked about, you can seek to eliminate those, but you can't be prepared for what's ahead without acknowledging the reality of your previous accomplishments, your previous challenges, and how you cope with stress and rigor in an academic program. So I ask you to reflect on that and to write this information down. This is your toolkit. This written plan is your window into developing resiliency. Resiliency is the ability to cope and to manage those invariable life ups and downs that will happen. You've likely been resilient in your life before. Maybe not in your academic life, but you certainly will have to develop resiliency, the ability to bounce back during your time in a graduate health professions program and beyond. Certainly when you are a clinician or a clinical health care provider in some capacity. Resiliency will be a skill that you do without even thinking about it. So this written plan of previous accomplishments, how you've previously been successful, how you've navigated challenges in the past, and your coping skills and strategies that you, that you have a preference for, this is your written plan. It's a window into your pathway to resiliency. Every single journey has a map. Figure out where you're headed. Now every map, every plan has a backup. Right? If I can't go down this road, I can take the back way. You have to think about your journey to applying to health professions programs and in a health professions program as a map. What happens when things don't go my way? What happens when I'm sidelined by a crisis or I encounter a stressor or perhaps I develop anxiety or I get grades that I'm not happy with? What is my backup plan? Every challenge has obstacles. How do you navigate previous challenge? That gives you a window into what you can replicate or what you need to tweak and adjust to be able to meet the challenges associated with grad health professions programs in the future. This is your resiliency map. Having a coaching and training mentality is really important. Because when you coach and you train, there's room for error, there's room for growth, and there's room for developing skills. 
So when we have a coaching and training mentality and we apply it to our graduate health professions programs, students are able to acknowledge that there's going to be missteps, things are going to go poorly, challenges are going to arise, and every challenge is an opportunity to navigate it a little bit smoother the next time. So preparation is key. Knowing that you're prepared and being able to put that work in now while you're applying is essential. Figure out your resiliency map. Recognize that motivation will come and go. Again, back to the, the concept of a coaching and training mentality. You're not going to be motivated to get up and go to the gym every day. But if you have certain fitness goals in that time where your motivation says, forget about it, let's stay in bed, discipline sees you through. If you're motivated to go to, I'll just use for example, dental school, and you apply and you are not successful this year getting into dental school, you will feel very unmotivated and not want to reapply. However, the discipline associated with your goals, being able to address the deficiencies in your application and move forward to apply again, ultimately, I'm sure you'll be successful. Many, many students reapply. In fact, about 37%, I believe. So these are just some examples of how your motivation on any, humans are, are very flawed when it comes to motivation. We have a lot of great ideas about things we want to accomplish, and then we get sidetracked. And if we have an all or nothing approach, that's often when our sidetrack becomes the permanent path. But allow your discipline to kick in. Allow that to see you through when your motivation fades. Preparation, motivation, and discipline. The basics matter more than you think. When students run into struggles in graduate health professions programs, it is very rarely because they're not able to do the work or they're not academically capable or they weren't in, you know, meant to be a doctor. That is very rarely what occurs in our institutions. What often happens is something associated with coping, resiliency, ability to navigate challenge, that's what will make a really difficult pathway for a student. And so often I see with students that the basics of eating, sleeping, um, taking care of uh, your study time, blocking out distractions, those basics of preparation, maintaining your motivation best you can, and relying on discipline, those are out the window. So keeping that on the forefront is extremely important, both for your mental health and for your academic success in your program. Being flexible, we call this psychological flexibility. Being flexible is a skill that you're going to develop over time. You will be flexible with your patients. You will be flexible with um, the people that you work in an office with. You will have to be flexible with the ups and downs of, of um, providing care for patients for the rest of your life. And so creating psychological flexibility and approaching your graduate health professions application uh, season and ultimately your graduate health professions program with flexibility is a skill that you can begin to develop now, build upon what you've already developed in the world of flexibility, and immediately apply. So when you think about skill building, think about your tools from both the perspective of academics and your emotional health tools. What works for you when you study and prepare in undergrad or in master's program? What doesn't work? What have you not tried? In terms of emotional health, what works for you? I'll tell you that for me, I have to, I have to get my rest. I have to sleep. If I don't sleep, I'm frazzled. I can't make good decisions. When I was in my doctorate program, you know, if I was down on sleep, I didn't do my best work. What doesn't work for me? Um, I gave an example. <laughs> um, what doesn't work for me is, is not sleeping, but also what doesn't work for me is trying to do stuff late at night. I'm an early riser. So with academics, I have to get up. I have to get my reading and writing out of the way early. 
That's what works for me. It's also good for my emotional health. What have you not tried? Have you not tried exercise? Have you not tried yoga? Have you not tried studying with friends? These are the things that you need to acknowledge and are good to think about now from the perspective of your previous student life and project into the future. What might you have to do to step up your game or to navigate the challenges of a more rigorous health professions program? Think about your academic and your emotional endurance. This is the maximum duration that you can spend on stuff, right? How much time on task? How much studying, preparing, study guides, meeting with professors, meeting with study groups? How much of that can you take at once before you start to tune out and not absorb any new information or not be able to acquire any new knowledge? What is the environment that has, has to be like for you to be academically successful? Do you need to be studying alone? Do you think you're going to be living at home? What are you going to do in terms of, uh, you know, when you have to uh, study for an exam? Do you go to Starbucks where there's a little bit of noise? Do you need complete silence? Think about the maximum duration that you could spend in your environment um, at a level of performance academically and the amount of time that you can put in on academics. That helps you know your limits. You have to know your limits as a health professional. You have to know when you need to call in perhaps another specialist or a colleague or rely on your staff. You have to know your limits academically as well to be able to perform your best and ward off burnout. Emotionally, same thing. How much time do I need to be able to prioritize emotional health? If I hike, if I knit, if I sit on YouTube and watch videos on TikTok, um, how much of that do I need to be able to get a nice break? What does my environment need to be like for my emotional wellness and my mental health? How do I perform best? Do I have to be able to get my workouts in a couple times a week or else I'm not feeling uh, calm, I don't feel that I've managed uh, my health. These are all examples of taking an inventory of your emotional health skills, your psychological health skills. What do you need to be successful and how long do you need to include it in your week to be able to sustain your academic life? These are all things that you've done before. And so again, these are windows into how you will perform when you get into graduate health professions program, um, but only if you acknowledge it and think about it. The last one here is stamina. How intense things are. Academically, take inventory of your skills. How do you manage competing interests? How do you manage going from four or five courses to nine or 13 courses a semester? How do you manage your stress when you have a lot of tests or quizzes the same day, when you have a lot of homework that's due the same uh, week, what is the way that you cope and you structure your time academically when things are extremely intense? Lots of due dates, lots of exams. Think from the same perspective of emotional health. When you have a lot going on in your life, how do you manage those competing interests when things get intense? How do you adjust your uh, an, a schedule, perhaps? Um, that's how you cope with those intense times. So think about what works for you and what's not worked for you in the past. And these are skills that you can either develop or fine tune. So graduate health professions programs are hard because they are hard. They're absolutely difficult. Applying to graduate health professions programs is difficult and hard and intense. It's intended to be that way. Take stock of your skills, your endurance, and stamina. You're not doing anything wrong if this seems daunting or difficult or hard. It's hard because it's hard. But what you can do is prepare. Write down your plan. Take a look at how you've managed in the past. And that's your template for how you'll manage in the future. What needs to change? How might you include more flexibility psychologically into how you approach your daily life to be able to prepare for graduate health professions education? Developing the ability to be resilient and to cope is a skill. 
Um, and you need to do it now because life will not stop. Things will absolutely go wrong. And being able to adapt, cope, and innovate is important to acknowledge on the front end as you're looking forward to the challenges ahead. So what is the biggest wellness secret I can share? You have already done this all before. Um, you have likely already thought about some of these things. Whether you've consciously acknowledged it or not um, is, another, is another thing. But having done it, you've done it. Now you need to think critically about it so you can replicate your recipes for success in the future and know that success doesn't look any one way, especially when we get into graduate health professions programs. Success is completing the program and that's going to look really different based on everyone's resiliency map, everybody's capacity to cope, and everybody's ability to be psychologically flexible. You are your greatest asset and I want you to take care of yourself while you're in your application phase. And moreover, and most importantly, when you're in the graduate health professions program of your choice. If I can ever be of service or of help, if you have any questions, um, if you have thoughts on this presentation, I encourage you to contact me. You'll have my contact information after this video, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much and take care.